Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a really great feature of Google Docs, which is the Google Form. And uh, I'm just going to sign into a Gmail or a, a Google Docs account over here. And as soon as I get that signed in, you'll see that I am in my Google Docs main page here. Now I'm going to go to Create New on the upper left and choose from this drop-down, Form. And the Google Form, it's very simple to work with, but it really has a lot of purpose. For instance, students could pull other students or create uh, you know, research documents from this form. It gives you a very easily broken down survey at the end. Teachers can uh, pull other teachers or their students, use it as an informal assessment tool or all, all sorts of other ways to do it. And I've worked with a couple of administrators actually that have used it to pull their staff for their training needs for conference days and, and other uh, particulars. So it's a very, very easy way to get a lot of people to take a survey and it's fairly simple and it's free. So all good things in there. Um, let's start off over here where it says untitled form. We're going to make that our title. So I'm going to say staff survey. And over here it asks for, um, you can include descriptive text. So I'm going to say please um, answer all questions below to help ascertain your um, training needs. Okay. Now, first question, over here we have question title. I'm going to click over here where it says sample question one, and I'm going to say your name is, and um, basically we have a couple of choices for the response type, and, and in this one, obviously, the logical one is text, because we want them to respond with text, but I'll show you. You can have text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list, scale, and grid, and we'll go over a couple of those options in a little bit. This is just showing you what their answer is going to look like. We're going to make this a required question, which you don't have to do, but of, of course, if you want to know who's saying it, we do. And I'm going to go to Done. As soon as I've done that, you see this is exactly what's going to be shown to the person that's going to answer. So it's basically building it as we go. This question over here, you'll see when I, when I uh, bring my pointer over it, I have a uh, yellow bar that lights up, and I get some options in the upper right. They are as follows. Edit, which is the pencil. Duplicate, which are these two boxes. Let's say I want to use the same type of question over and over again, like a scale question or a, uh, a multiple choice one. I could just duplicate that and change the very uh, you know, per pertinent information. And the trash can, which is deleted, of course. Now, you also do have the option when you see this little uh, cross or the plus sign, you can kind of move questions around in terms of which one goes first. That's pretty easy to do. So question number two, I'm going to go over to the pencil to edit it. And I'm going to ask, um, let's see, what technologies do you most need help with? Okay, so I asked for technologies, so we're going to ask them a multiple choice. So you could say choose as many as necessary. Okay, now we're going to make this obviously checkboxes, because multiple choice would mean one particular answer. Checkboxes can apply to, all, uh, to more than one. So option one, let's do smart board Option two, let's do uh, document cameras. Option three, we could do inspiration nine. And number four, um, let's do podcasting. Okay. And you can add as many as you'd like over here. Obviously, the X next to the selection will take it away. We're going to make this a required question as well, and I'm going to go to done. Very good. So now there's no second, or rather third question that's set up for you to edit. So we can go over here on top to add item. And you'll see actually all the different types of questions we can add. Um, we saw that before as well. You can also see under other a section header and a page break. So under section header, it actually will break up the two pages, or rather break up the two sections of the document. And page break, of course, will start a new page of the survey. So I'm going to actually go to section header. And I'm going to change this to fun questions just for this sample. And we'll make these just for fun. Done. OK. Again, go to add an item at the top. And I'm going to now make a, um, let's see, let's do a scale question. And the question will be, rate the following movie. And the Goonies, one of my all-time faves. All right, so help text, we don't need to do that right here, I don't think. Scale, we can choose a scale between 1 and 10. I like 1 and 5 is fine. And over here, it's nice because you could label it. So 1 would be awful. And number 5 can be awesome. And there we go. 
Now, I'm not going to make this a required question. I'm just going to go to Done. And what I'm going to do over here is actually duplicate it. So now I can change this, and I can make the name of the movie different. So over here I can make uh, rate the following movie, and we can make it Avatar, and go again to Done. Now, so far it's shaping up pretty good. We have our survey over here. It's auto-saving, if you noticed at the top. On the bottom of the page it says you can view the published form here, and it gives you a direct URL to this form, which is really nice. I also can see at the very top of the page, next to Add Item, Theme. Now this is very, very basic. So I have just a white theme, but if I click on Theme, you'll notice I can change it to a whole bunch of different things. A lot of them are seasonal and, and kind of kid-friendly, but you'll notice if you go through, there's about 71 of them right now. So I know that there is a very classic school-based theme, which looks like a notebook paper. So it kind of makes it look schooly, and uh, I think that looks nice. So I'm going to go to Apply up on top. There you go. Now you're not going to see it right now, but you do notice that it has selected your theme as notebook paper. All right, so let's see the rest of the options. Over here, next to the theme, we have Email This Form. Now that's an important option to know. Once you email it, you can actually um, send it out from another email. So basically, you're forwarding it. A lot of people don't like to use their Gmail or Google Docs account to send out things, especially in school, because perhaps they don't want them having their Google account, which is usually a personal account. If you email it to your school account, you can then forward it from your school account, because again, it gives a URL. Or in fact, if you click on Email This Form, you'll notice over here, you can include the form in the email. So it's actually dynamic HTML. When they take the survey, they can do it right in the email. They don't even have to go to an extra website. It's really, really easy. I'm going to go to Cancel right now. Over here, next to that, you see C Responses. The really cool thing about C Responses is you can see a summary of them or a spreadsheet. And we'll take a look at that in a second. And under More Actions, you can see Embed and Edit Confirmation. Embed is amazing because, of course, if you have a classroom website or a blog or your school site, you can put the survey right onto the main page or on your page, wherever you'd like. So I'm going to fill out the survey once or twice, do a little test, and then we'll come back and take a look at what it looks like when you see the responses. Okay, so on another account, I actually filled out a couple of uh, sample responses. So let's go over here now to See Responses. I'm going to go to Summary. And you'll see that I have three responses, and it breaks it down very, very visually and very easily for you. We have Joe Smith, Jane Smith, and Jason Smith. And we have a vote for SmartBoard. Three people said they needed SmartBoard, two needed dock cameras, and two needed podcasting. And it shows you percentages, as well as um, the breakdown over here as a bar graph. Down over here, it shows you the fun questions as well. Percentages and bar graphs as well. Very, very easy. Number of daily responses, so it shows you percentage-wise, or rather, a number-wise, how many people answered on what day. It's important to keep track, I guess, if you have a staff server that you send out, and you ask them to send a response within a certain amount of time, you can kind of track that as well. So I'm going to go to see complete responses, and over here, uh, it brings me to my document of the staff survey. So I click on that, and this is a really cool way to look at it. It shows you who did it, what the timestamp was, and exactly what they clicked on and the rating that they gave. So this is a real, real powerful tool. This gives you a complete breakdown here. Now this, of course, is where they got, or rather this you know, um, spreadsheet is where they took the visual responses from with the bar graphs, but you could, of course, create them in here as well. This is really important, A, because you see who exactly said what, uh, and B, because you really could do a lot with the data that's in here. So this is all from Google Forms, and it's all free, and it's a very powerful tool for your students, for yourself, for your administrators, a great tool. Check it out. Google Docs, and this is Google Forms.